It's like we're done before we even started So if this is the end now, baby Know that I gave him my all I'm leaving us I won't give up on you
everyone. All right, welcome to Saturday. Uh, if we haven't met yet, I'm the Pixel Geek, aka Nelson, or the other way around. Well, whatever. Um, glad you're here and welcome to the stream. If you're again, if you're new here, these streams happen every Saturday at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, today we had a one hour later start because uh, I had a private session with the Pixel Geek and Pixel Pro members, but um, I'll apologize. I did not announce that enough to those who signed up. So next month I will do a better job of doing that. But I did take the time to talk with Colleen and Sarah, two of the Pixel Geek uh, volunteers, and we have we're doing a lot of planning to build the future of this community and to to make it more human and more fun and and more of a community all right so uh let's start out by saying hi to everyone in the live chat uh who's here who's here first one in the door timothy hello welcome ripple effect welcome uh, Richard Smith is here. Abnormal Gamer. I'm not sure if I've met you yet, but hello. Welcome. Ollie's back. And BCA is back. Corey Moon is here. V is here from Malaysia. Yeah, where are you all from? Uh, yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Glad you're here. So today we're going to be learning about just the very, very basics of Webflow e-commerce. And if you have any questions about that, please get them in in the live chat now and Colleen will note it down and I will answer them when I'm done giving you a little tour of the basics of Webflow e-commerce. All right. And before we get into that, uh, morning announcements. So yes, Pixel Geek Awards. We've been I've been tweeting out the videos and uploading video interviews of the semi-finalists. Hearing their stories is super, super awesome. And again, the reason why I'm doing the No Code Awards is to uh, lift the stories. The stories of the humans behind the projects. What I feel that's missing in the awards space when it comes to a website or graphic design or any type of uh, No Code Awards it's missing the humans. It's missing all those decisions, all those failures, or all those um, points where you're confused on how do I build this? How do I make this launch? Where do I need help? Those stories is more important than the project itself. And that's why I've been posting up interview after interview. And I have a couple more that I need to upload right after this stream. But listen to their stories, and some of them may connect with you and help you uh, help you get inspired to take that next step in your project and to finally launch it. And if you do launch a no-code project next year, please submit that to the next no-code awards because we want to make that bigger and um, and better. But yeah, we're almost to the finals. Uh, I do have our guest judges recording their thoughts on some of the finalists. Uh, yeah, so lots of announcements next week. Speaking of next week, we're doing another stream Saturday at 10 a.m. But it's going to be different. I'm not going to be teaching anything since it's Halloween. And I know that um, not the whole world celebrates Halloween, but uh, we'll be just having a community party, you know, Um and I'll be announcing this more on an email, but we'll be playing Among Us. So if it's this cool murder mystery game, uh, go ahead and Google it if you haven't uh, played it or seen it yet. But I want to play with you, the community, on this game. Now, I've never played it. I've just saw some clips. I saw um, uh, I saw AOE, uh, AOE, AOC play it, uh, Alexa. Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, she's a politician here in the United States, and she played it with her community, and I thought it was awesome. I was like, okay, I want to do this too. So I'm not going to be teaching anything. I'm just going to be having fun with you all. So we're going to live stream that game. I'll have uh, 10 people in a Zoom call, and we'll stream that to YouTube and uh, LinkedIn and uh, Twitter as well. So if you want to get in on this, uh, download Zoom, download the game. 
we can all play cross uh, platform meaning if you have a pc an android or an iphone we can all play together and just have fun next week all right so i want to do that let's let's have some fun uh hello from colombia welcome Ma mauricio welcome all right so that's happening next week what else uh, and yeah we're gonna have a sign up board on the on the community chat board so you can sign up if you want to play if you don't want to play it's totally fine you can just watch in the live stream and speaking of what me colleen sarah and rock have been working on in the background is a while ago i did a a week-long live course for kids from the age of 8 to 16 and was teaching them really quickly how to use Webflow. And I told that to some of the people in the stream the, the day after I, I did that and I felt so inspired and empowered because all these children were learning. And some of you in the live chat were like, that would be cool if there was an adult version. Like, we want that. And I was like, hmm, okay, that's cool. Maybe we should. Can I get any volunteers to help me figure this out? And that's when the ball started to roll. But now the ball is like going really, really fast to the point where, yes, we are doing our own live course. A whole week, 20 hours. Uh, and we're starting it on a Sunday as just an orientation. And then Monday through Friday is an, uh, is the actual course. So four hours a day, you're going to be learning the very basics of Webflow in the way that I teach live. And then on Saturday, on the next Saturday stream, it'll be a, a show and tell from the students showing off what they've built. And the goal if, for the live course is to build your own portfolio site from not knowing how to do things in Webflow. So I'll be teaching as much as I can. And so uh, next month we'll have like some sort of like beta beta week because we need to test this out first. Like it's a nice idea and we have all the plans, but if we don't test it first, it may fall flat. So if you want to be part of this, stay tuned to the community chat board because we're going to be sending out some surveys. We're going to be asking if you want to be part of this beta project. So we're going to be looking for five students who want to learn along for a whole week, 20 hours of learning Webflow from me and uh, Sarah No Socks, who's in the chat room right now. She's going to be helping assist me in this. So yeah, you guys asked for it and we've been working on it in the background for a long time since, I don't know, was it August or even before that? I mean, yeah, it was a long time, but we've been making this happen. So it's coming. Yes. Super excited about that. Um, here we go. Anything else? Anything else I missed in live chat? No? Okay, cool. So hopefully you're excited about that one. Me, Rock, Colleen, and Sarah are super excited to make this happen. And let's go for it. So let, let me share my screen and move on. <laughs> Boom. Cool. So Webflow e-commerce. Pretty cool thing that you can sell things without having to write a single line of code. Now, there's other products out there like Shopify, WooCommerce, uh, BigCommerce, and, and stuff like that that let you sell stuff, make you let you create a website that can sell things without having to code. But if you use the power and understand the power of Webflow already, then building Webflow e-commerce store makes total sense. But I'm going to get you through the very, very basics of this and take your questions, if you have any, uh, about it. So 
if you're a marketer, graphic designer, someone who doesn't want to start from a blank page, totally understand. Use a free template from Webflow to start out with, okay? And what's good about using a free website template is that if you're on a free Webflow account, you're limited to two static pages, 50 CMS items, um, and, and that's it. Okay, so you can only make up to two websites, but each website only has two static pages and 50 dynamic, uh, 50 CMS items. However, if you start from a template, then you unlock more than that while still on the free starter account plan. So I would suggest doing something like this. Like I'll go to Chomp right here. It's free. Click it. And you'll, you'll see what you get. You get a beautiful design already. And what you can do is just change all the colors out, change the imagery, the text, whatever you want. Start from here and click on use for free. When that happens, you'll get this screen and click on create project. Okay, and you can name your project whatever. Name it whatever. And then it'll create the site. And boom, you're ready to start building. And again, if you're on a starter plan, you only get two pages, but this one already has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you already have seven pages to work with and e-commerce, and you're still on the free plan. This, if you're still evaluating Webflow, this is the best way to go because you can mess around with as many things as you can before getting into a paywall, all right? And what I mean by paywall is before you have to actually have to upgrade your account plan or your site plan, all right? So let's pretend that um, this is what I want. This is the layout I want. And so if you want to change any colors, for instance, this color right here, this is not part of your brand color. You can just click on it, go down to color right here, click on that. And if you don't notice, this has a triangle, all right? So what triangle means is it's a global swatch. And when you change this color, it changes everywhere else on the website that's using that same swatch. And so you need to click on the edit button, edit swatch, and then change this color. Let's change it to purple. And so notice how this element, this element, this one, this one, and this one, they all change, including this one. All of them change to a different color because they're all connected to that one global swatch. That's what that triangle means. So that triangle is just a little itty bitty triangle, but it has so much impact across the whole template, all right? So that's what global swatches does. So let's make it purple right there. And then I'm going to click save. And there we go. Already, I've changed so much. Even that top bar, that announcement bar, I've changed that as well with just a couple of seconds. All right. So that's how you start styling stuff in a template. All right. If you need to change an image, just double click the image and then replace. That's all you got to do. Okay. And for logos like this, you would need to double click inside of a symbol, double click the image again, and just replace that logo. Okay. All right. And we scroll down. And if like you see like graphics in the background, you can just click on the section and notice in the styles panel right here, we have background shape content. Now, if I click on the eyeball to hide it, watch what happens. That background goes away. All right. So you can delete, you can remove or hide that background, or you can just click on it and change the image to something else. Okay. 
And even with the free starter plan, you can start uploading your own images, your own background images. You can upload as much uh, assets as you want into Webflow. The starter account plan is free and there is no limitation to how many assets you upload. So go at it. Uh, yeah. All right, so that's uh, those basic things. Now let's just go straight into more of a uh, e-commerce stuff like this. Now, if I click on this, notice how this tab right here is purple. But if I click on like something like this, like this text, this is blue. See that tab? It's blue. So why is that? What is the difference? So blue means it's static, meaning it's not connected to a database. It's not collected to a Webflow co um, collection. So, so when I change that, that has no effect on what's coming from the collections or the, or for e-commerce coming from the products. Okay. So if I, if I click on this, Notice we have the white and then the purple. So white or blue. So you can see here it's blue. Here it's blue and white. That means it's static. But if I click on this, it's purple. And the tab is purple here as well. That means this information is coming from the Webflow e-commerce or Webflow collections settings. All right. So if I click on this and I'm like, oh, I want to change the name of Burger Dreams, I can't. But if I double click on browse our menu, yes, I can change that. So if I want to change a product, all of this content right here is being pulled from the Webflow e-commerce tab. Okay. So if I click on the shopping cart and go to products, this is where all my stuff is. So burger dreams is right here. That's a massive burger. I've never had burger with a fried egg. Is it good? I, I've i seen it before, but I'm like, oof. Like my stomach just feels, ugh, just by looking at it. Anyways, if I want to change the name of that, I can do so right here and say, uh, uh, Burger Time. I don't know. That's a video game name, but like Burger Time and then save it. Now watch what happens if I go back to the web page. There we go. It's been changed here. So it might seem like it's a roundabout way to change text, but it makes sense because you're actually updating a database, AKA Webflow collection. Okay. So uh, yeah, so you can, uh, edit the time, the time, the, the price, the description and whatnot. That's where all of these items come from. So if you want to start changing your, the, your products inside of this free template, you can do so by clicking on e-commerce products and go to town. You can even select them all. So I've, hold on, let me zoom in. So you can select and then click on this to select them all and delete them. You can delete all the, the, uh, pre-created products, or you can just go through each one and start editing each one to what you need. Okay. So this is all for basic, um, physical products. One of the new things that Webflow has created is this feature right here where you can tell Webflow what kind of product it is. Is it a physical one? Is it digital? Is it a service? Or is it just something else? Okay. So all the templates right now, because it's a new feature that came after the templates were created, all of them are set to advanced, but you can set it to physical, all right? It's up to you, whatever you want to do. Cool. So yeah, that's a little bit about 
products inside of Webflow and how to quickly get going with a template. And before I go to the next part about designing stuff like your add to cart, your, your checkout pages, let me go to the questions. Let me make sure I'm keeping up. A uh, question from the stream. Timothy, are there any subscription alternatives to member stack you can re recommend? I'm a fan, of course, but the catch is I need to receive subscriptions before I can afford member stack. Mm, if you want to member gate, if you want to paywall something on your website, I only know of member stack that works well with Webflow. Oh, and there's another one called uh, Member Space. But if you if you don't need a member gate stuff, you can use a another platform like Patreon, uh, BuyMeACoffee.com, uh, Gumroad. There's a bunch that can do subscriptions. So there's that. Junio, this functionality e-commerce already works for Brazil. Uh, does Good question. Stripe Brazil. Uh, pricing for you. If Stripe works in Brazil, then yes. Um, yeah, you would have to see if, let's see here. Mm, 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 marketplaces global if strike so the reason why i'm looking at this is because oh it's still in preview so i don't think it'll it'll work okay so webflow e-commerce is built on top of stripe and so when you start collecting uh revenue when you start collecting orders it's actually sending a signal to Stripe. So that's stripe.com. And if Stripe doesn't work in your country, then you have to wait on it. Yeah, so that's one of the limitations of Webflow. So it currently works in all of these countries right now. But if it says preview, it means that uh, Webflow doesn't work on that yet. But once Stripe announces that, hey, it's full it's ready to go then it'll work all right so it only works here so sorry brazil all right and so when you're starting up uh webflow e-commerce it's going to ask you to set up these things like um add a payment provider so if i click on this Okay, I have to do some other stuff. So when you set up your payment provider, it's going to ask you to connect to your Stripe account. All right. So let's see here. Is Stripe the only option for payment from Nikki? Stripe is not the only option for payment. So what you can do is let me go to the order checkout. So yeah, we'll move forward. So you notice there's this button right here. So you can do Apple Pay, but you can also do uh, Google Pay with here. All right, enable web payments. So if I click on, there we go. So you can, you can have people pay by credit card and that goes through Stripe, or you can have people pay through PayPal or Google Pay or Apple Pay. And they all, there you go, yeah. So you just need to connect those things and you'll be good to go. Yeah, good questions, good questions. All right, so those are questions so far. All right, so how do we start customizing stuff like this shopping cart? So again, Webflow makes it easy, relatively. So if I, Double click my cart, I get to this element settings panel. And if I open the cart, this is just like opening some sort of um, 
some sort of modal, right? But this is a special modal that lets you add uh, products that people have added to their cart. And so you can style this however you want, all right? Like taking a text block and start making it bigger with the font, like something like that. And then pushing, let's push the line height, oops. Push the line height to like 26, push it down. And so if you're not familiar with Webflow collections, this is the same thing. This is the same exact workflow. You have a bunch of your collection list items and when you move one thing, you're, you're moving them all, okay? So let me put um, item name for the class name. And there we go. You know, we can even make this bigger if we want. Let's see here, I have the width of 60, so let's make that 110. And there we go, we've customized it. Let's give it rounded corners. Cool, let's add some sort of like box shadow to make it come out of the page a little bit more. Okay, and so yeah. Customize it however you want. And remember that purple color that's following us around? It, again, it's that swatch. It's that swatch that's uh, following us around everywhere. See, that background color is brand. And so I've changed that once and it changed it everywhere. So if you don't like the cart to be on the right, you can have different types. You can have a drop down on the left or even a centered modal, all right? So centered modal, it'll look like that. On the left, on the right, or a drop down. So yeah. And if you wanna take it even further, which is more advanced, you can add Webflow interactions to all of this, but it's up to you, okay? So let's go ahead and close that cart and there we go. So that's editing the cart. Now let's go ahead and edit the, now let's go ahead and edit this right here. I'm gonna click on the cart button and yeah, what if, what if we want this, like say, want it bigger or wider? And let's center, no we can't. How do we make that shopping cart bigger? Oh, it's an image. Cart icon, how do I make it bigger? I can't, no! Huh, well, you can mess around with that, add some round, more rounded corners to make it look more like a button. You can even change this cart icon by replacing it with another image if you want. Again, it's, it's your world, it's your call. What if I change this like orange? Okay, I can do that. Yeah, I'll just leave it white for now. I wonder why I can't change the size. Hmm. And even if you want, let's see here. Cart button, what if I wanna add a piece of text? So I'm adding text inside of there. Oh, okay, there we go. And I can just say cart and push that to the side. Yeah, see how simple that is? I just put a piece of text inside of the cart button and that's, and made it say cart. And that's it. Okay. All right, so that's editing your cart. All right. And now, since we're on the checkout page, Again, I showed you how to change the the web payment of this page, either 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 Apple Pay or Pay with Browser. You have that, but there's also uh, a part for um, checking out for PayPal. Okay. So yeah, this is. Oh, let me go back to order page. Wait. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So we're on the checkout page and Webflow already gives you 
all of the form fields that you need, all the basic form fields that you need to start selling your stuff, including this sticky sidebar. One of the things um, I like to see as a consumer is to see my items, right? See, so these order items, stuff I'm about to buy right above the the price. So what I can do is I can take this order items and put it above the order detail, the order detail being this sidebar. So I'm going to drag order items above order detail. And there we go. I see this right here. Oop. Okay. I, I want both of these. I want both of these to stick. So let's see here. What can I do? Okay. So this order detail has sticky. So I'm going to delete that, wrap both of these in a div. Just, just like this, wrap both of them in a div and make this sticky. So that way they both stick to the top. And again, try doing this without code. Try it. I mean, actually try doing this with code. Okay, let me move it down a bit, something like this, and there we go. So both of them stick with me. So as I'm, as I'm moving down this page, I want to continually be reminded of what I'm about to buy, which is a burger and two drinks. Pretty good. All right. And you can customize the look and feel of each of these. And say you want even more information from your customer before they pay. So there are, there are ways to get three additional form fields, which is right here in the ad panel. I can just drag this in to right under web payments. I can drag that in and there we go. I can get more information. And these are just suggestions. It doesn't have to be a telephone number. I've used this for like, um, yeah, I've used this for other things like this checkbox right here could be for something else. This notes right here could be something else. They, this is, it's up to you. Webflow gives you three more fields. If you need more than three for additional information, no, you can't do that. That's a limitation and yeah, you can't do that, but you get three. Okay. All right. Um, so that's how to customize this. What's next? Um, the order confirmation and the order confirmation is, it looks just like the other page is just confirming, you know, after they pay, here's all information. Cool. And lastly, you want to send that customer an email. So you would go to settings, email, and you would set up the look and feel of your email. Now you can't completely customize the layout of this, but you can do some things like the background color, the accent color. You can change the text of some of these things. So you can change the email. You can change the email subject line. You can change the greeting message. Uh, for people who are downloading um, digital a digital product, you can customize that. Yeah, there's a lot of things to play with inside of Webflow e-commerce. So this is this stream is just the very very bare minimum basics of if you are just getting started, where do you start? Get a free template on a starter free account. Do not buy anything until you feel comfortable editing all this stuff. And once you've got your text, your images, your products, all of that inside of Webflow, the way you like it, then upgrade the site plan to the e-commerce, to the e-commerce site plan. And that way you'll gain even more functionality, more uh, uh, options to do more with your site. And you can also launch it live on your 
custom domain name. Okay. So I know that was a very, very quick, but yeah, if you have any questions, let's take them now. Um, be right back. I need to get a drink of water. So get your questions in the live stream chat. So see you in about 30 seconds. Let me play some music real quick. Okay, cool. Be right back. Okay, I was kind of, was kind of dying there, but we're good. All right, let me get the questions. So Nikki, I've already answered that one. Is the Stripe the only option for payment? Uh, no, PayPal, Stripe, Apple Pay, Google Pay. Hmm. BCA, give some information on shipment. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, hold on. Hold on. I have to set up, um, like Webflow asks you for address. So I had to set that up real quick. Shipment. Okay. So inside of the Webflow settings panel, so your settings, e-commerce, you have this shipping right here. So you can set your shipping zone, okay? So it's set to United States for now, but you can click on edit countries and you can set it for whichever country, all right? And you can do different shipping methods. Like what if I want to do a flat rate percentage base, price base, quantity base, weight base. Like you can add as many, you can add as many as you want. Rate amount, so let's say, oh, enter a number greater than zero. Okay, how about $5 flat rate? Or I can set it as free. Yeah, save, cool. And then I can add a new method saying, if you, if you buy 50, <laughs> 50 items or more. So if you buy like 50 items or more, oh wait, max quantity 50, no. Minimum quantity 50, then it's free shipping, you know? And then there you go. So you can add as many different types of shipping methods as you want. And you can also do it based on per country, okay? So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. And you can set up your taxes. Uh, so if you have uh, VAT or taxes, um, it is set up here. Uh, yes, and notifications. Like, you can have notifications sent to people or additional email recipients if you're, like, Someone bought something. Yay. I want to send an email to uh, myself, my boss, and my colleagues, and uh, maybe 
the shipping director or something like that, the logistics director, or something like that. Um, so you can send them all an email automatically once an order is received. All right. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. Um, oh, new feature. Yeah, variants. Cool. Uh, digital downloads. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Do we have variants inside of this? Hold, oh, please. Where's the okay option sets? Uh, okay. Okay, so inside of Webflow e-commerce, you also have options, okay, or what we call variants. And what these are good for is things like clothes, shoes, or uh, anything that has a variant. So, for example, like a shirt. That's a product, but what are the variants? sizes small medium large extra large extra extra large extra medium so i can do that like let's pretend this is a shirt even though this is for a drink fig and lime um okay we can we'll pretend it's a shirt so we'll just say like give that a category name of size or size there we go and then we have to set our options so we have like small medium extra medium and large okay so we have those and every time i add one webflow is adding a variant of each one and with each variant you can change the the image of the variant you can change the price you can change so much <laughs> of it okay and I'm going to save that. And then there you go. So let me go to the drink fig and lime page. Okay. Let me look for fig. And there we go. And so you, if you noticed, uh, this has the, the options or the variants. So there's size. But if I go to something else, that variant is gone. Okay, because this one doesn't have it. So Webflow adds that drop down menu. Pretty cool. Super simple. I didn't have to code a thing. However, a lot of people in the community were like, that's cool and all, but like, I want to make some sort of like button. I don't want a drop down. Can I do something that's not a drop down? And the answer for a long time was no, but we'll get to it. Well, they got to it. So here's how to play around with that. So uh, if you look here and I clicked on the element settings, there is no way to style this. Okay, there is no way to not use a drop down menu. So what you need to do is take this element, add to cart, and delete it. And then add another add to cart again. And now we have a lot of options. Okay. So what we did was we had to delete the old code because again, this pro this, uh, this template was created before the, the new feature was added. So we had to delete that old code and put in a new one. So now that we're in the new one, Watch what happens. If I click on the options list right here and then go to the option settings, remember we only had pre-select default variant. Well, now we have variant selector. Now we can say a select field or buttons. And there we go. All right. So watch again, let me go back. Let me undo everything. Okay, so this is the old add to cart. And if I click on options list, it only says pre-select default variant. To enable the new version, you have to delete the old add to cart and add the new one. And then if I click on this select field, sorry, if I click on option list right here, I get pre-select variant and I can select buttons. And there you go. 
So that's the difference. Okay. And with this button, I can just take this and say, uh, let's let, let's make a pill. Okay. Let's make a pill type of thing just for fun. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. Let me call this variant button. So when I click ver set that as a variant button, all of these have that same class name. Okay. So as you can see, I set it once it sets it for all of them. Cool. Now let's play around with the first one. So I'm going to click on the down arrow here and say for the first item. Okay. So notice how it says first item up here for the first item. Let's make the rounded corners just for the top left and bottom left. We'll say that one is 15. Okay. And then for this one right here, let's go to last item and set this to 15. Okay. And then with all of these, let's see here. There we go. For all of these variant buttons, let's remove that margin right. So they're right next to each other. Okay, do negative one. And if I preview, there we go. And I can also play around with the hover effects as well. So yeah, this way you have more control over the style. I mean, it doesn't have to be a, it doesn't have to be like a button button. You can make it a circle. Like imagine if you had colors, right? Um, yeah, let's make colors actually, rather than just saying it, let me just make it right now. So say we have that option set and let's do colors and let's just say black and then white. Okay. Done. Save. And there we go. We have black and white. But can I make this a different get back? Okay, so I need to make a background color. So if you made a background color field, you can connect it to, but I don't have one yet. But you, you see what I mean. Let me do a hover effect with these real quick. Uh, we'll do purple and white with a preview and there we go cool cool all right so that's one of the bigger new features for webly e-commerce that was updated all right what else do we got um, how can I make the CMS more organized, especially if I have this is from Judy, how can I make inside the CMS more organized, especially if I have more than 100 items? Uh, yeah, that's a vague question. Um, when you're organizing your CMS, use multiple collections. Okay. So in, in the pixel geek community website, I have like, for example, I have a collection named categories, and then I have a collection name of tags, and then I have a collection name of tutorials. So tutorials has a single reference field to categories and also a multi-reference field to tags and that way I can organize them in a way that okay here's the ones that are listed under these categories here's the ones listed under these tags and so using multiple collections will help you organize your CMS more but if you want to add your uh, uh, read-only link to the chat room 
and remove the .com from the URL. Put that in the live chat room, and I'll take a look at it right now. All right. Timothy, what's the best method for collecting subscription payments? To clarify, I'm looking for detailed information, how to set up and connect all the prices for a subscription-based product in Webflow. Um, subscription-based products are coming to Webflow, I think. Um, I know that the community has been asking for it, but that's one of the things that I bet you they're working on it. Because the community has been very loud about it. Like, hey, we need subscription-based stuff. So it it's coming. But if you need it now, there's other ways to do it. Like Gumroad. There's Foxy Cart. Uh, member Stack. Member Space. Uh, buy Me a Coffee is good, too. So, yeah. Ripple Effect. Have you heard of Udesly? Yes, I have. They're awesome people where you can convert your Webflow website in a shop of, into a Shopify template. That way you can build something amazing in Webflow and have more ways for payments in Shopify. Yes. So let me throw their website up on the stream. Okay. Waiting. Waiting. Okay. There we go. Um, cool. So if you want to use Webflow to design and build your website, but you want to port your design over to another platform, well, it's hard to do it manually, but Udesly, the team at Udesly has found a way to make it easier with what they call an adapter. So they take your exported Webflow files and they somehow magically code it for the platform that you wanna use instead of Webflow. So you can port over your Webflow exported code into Shopify, WordPress, Go, Ghost, or Net, Netlif, Netlify, I've never, tr I've never used that. I've never said that word, and now I'm saying it for the first time. Netlify. Is that right? Netlify? Yeah. But yeah, so their adapter app is where you just drag in your zip file, and then you Desly magically makes it happen for the other uh, platform. So if you want to try that out, you Desly.com. Oh, here, here, yeah, here's an example. See, you take your WordPress and then you drag in your zip file, press convert, and then, boo! Of course, it's not going to happen that fast, but yeah. So you can try that out. Okay. Uh, Ladivs. Ladislav? Hey, do you want to review my Webflow site? Yes, I do. If you have any links. Ooh, it's already 12 o'clock. All right. So. Let's go to 12.15 and, um, yeah, show me your links. And, oh, wow, thank you so much for your support, the, the, the super chat. You rock. Please, I want to see your site. Thank you so much. And while... Um, yeah, and while I'm waiting for your link, I want to say thank you to everyone who's watching again, but, uh, next week, no tutorial, just fun, Among Us is a, a video game that I think is going to be fun for everyone in the community, uh, I'm a bad liar, so I'm probably going to lose, <laughs> so, it, yeah, we'll try it, I'll probably be giggling when I'm like, I'm not the imposter and yeah. So let's try it out. Um, so next week, see you there. Also, yeah, stay tuned for the uh, survey that I'll be sending out because I'm looking for five students who want to take this live from complete Webflow beginner to Webflow 
intermediate, like you understand all the fundamentals of web design and web flow in one week. So that's coming really soon, next month. Um, yeah, Ladislav, go ahead and put your link. Yeah. But I hope you guys enjoyed this stream. I hope you learned a little bit about Webflow e-commerce. Waiting for Ladislav's link. Let's see here. Anything else I'm missing? Okay. Uh, there's one question from the chat board saying, I have a collection of 180 products with 50 custom fields. Webflow does not allow full custom fields CSV import for products. Is it possible to do this with custom code? Thanks in advance. Uh, yeah, so when you're importing a CSV of data into a Webflow collection or Webflow products collection, it's kind of limited because you can upload basic text strings, you know, like a date, a title, name of a product, um, a paragraph of text, stuff like that. Yeah, that's simple. But, um, and images too. But um, if you're trying to import things into like a, a single reference or a multi-reference field, that is not possible inside of Webflow. So it gets a little bit tougher because if you have like 180 products, you can upload some of that content, but then you'll have to go back one by one and make sure that, that everything's set up correctly. And that's just how it is right now. But I, I bet the team is working on that, you know? Um, yeah. And, and I think I talked about this in a previous stream and I want to make a quick tutorial about it too soon is like, if you're uploading a video link, inside of a video field through CSV or through Zappy or something like that. Yeah, that is possible. However, it's only halfway. It doesn't send the signal to Embedly, which is a third party um, embedding tool that Webflow uses in the background. It doesn't activate that on import. So you have to find workarounds. So yeah, uploading isn't yet there, but they're trying, they're trying. Okay, um, where else can I share a preview link, Ladislav? Um, you can tweet it at me. Yeah, uh, send it to my Twitter account, at the Pixel Geek. Let me go to my Twitter account right now. Okay. Nothing, nothing waiting. Yeah. Waiting, waiting. Where can I? Okay. Oh yeah. If, or if you want to put a link into that Google doc that Colleen has linked. Yeah, we'll make it easier next time for posting links. Still trying this out because, um, and the reason why we, and the reason reason why we don't um, let people post links, like I don't allow people to post just any link except for the mods, is that a long, long time ago, uh, back in 2015, 16 or something, that I was doing the official Webflow live streams. Someone posted a, a um a very loud link where you click on it, a scary face would show up, and it would sh have a loud sound. They were wait. I guess that person was trying to wait for a reaction from me. I just took off my headphones and I'm like, no, and they didn't get a reaction from me. And I was like, that's that's pretty mean. So I just learned my lesson from that point. Uh, can only preview, not type. Hello. 
type here. All right. Cool. Still wait. There we go. All right. I have the link. I have the link from Ladislav. Oops. And I didn't get to copy it because now it's gone. There it goes. Copy. Let me throw it up here. It's not. <laughs> ah, it's not going to my other computer. Copy. Let me just DM it to myself. Oh my God, this is so bad. Send message. I sent myself a DM just to throw the link over to my Mac. We'll get it. Quality content right here. Come on. Come on. Cool. We made it, everyone. All right, Ladislav. What is the question? Let me go back. Um, okay. Hey, do you want to review my Webflow site? Okay. Let's review. Okay. So whenever I review a site, I'll be as honest as possible. And I always say design is subjective. And all I'm doing is trying to help you out. I do not mean any hard feelings. I just want you to get to a higher level because I know you're capable of it. All right. So here we go. I'm going to preview it and this is your home page. Okay. So you have a bunch of pages. Okay. So the first thing I see here is too much. I see way too much. My eyes does not know where to look at first. Okay. So whenever someone's looking at a website, they look in an F formation, they look in a F formation. So I'm going to start at the top left and go to the right. So the first thing I'm seeing is this big logo. Okay. And then I scan, I'm like, okay, cool. And then when I get down to here, my eye sees all of these things. So I'm looking at so many different colors. I'm looking at so many different styles, different, uh, different text. It's very, very jarring. When someone comes here, it's like, I, I don't know what I'm really looking at. What, where should I be looking at? So you need to simplify. Okay. You need to simplify. One thing I would strongly suggest is taking this div block and simply going to the filters and let's set the saturation to zero. So I set the filter of saturation to zero. So all of the content within all the child elements within this is now grayed out or black and white. And I can set that opacity to like something like this. Right. And I would do the same thing here. Let's remove this and say div block 76. And there we go. And immediately, immediately, it's not as loud because yes, I know that this company works with a lot of different, uh, uh, companies just to show proof that, Hey, we're, we're a real business. We're a big deal. Just ask any of these people that we worked with. Yes, that's cool and all. However, it's too much in your face. It's, it seems, it seems too much. Okay. The other thing is, um, what I always like about companies is the ones that tell a story first. That's just me, but I really feel that that can go a long way for any company. So Deco services delivering water process solutions since 1938 to me i'm like cool D cool you know who else has been delivering water since a long time ago 
clouds in nature and the Earth's rotation in science. What makes them different than their compo- uh, 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 opponents, the, their competitors, all right? If you're going to build a website, if this is for your own company or for, for a company, uh, a client company that you're working with, never start with the goal. Wait. Yeah, start with their story. What made them different than their clients? Why are they getting into this game? What are they doing that's different than their uh, uh, competitors? Why can't I say that word? What makes them different? That's what should be first on this page, all right? Because the earth has been delivering water since forever i don't know how many millions of years all right so what's my what makes them different what makes them yeah okay and also humans this is just a basic flyer that you get into them in the mail show a human on here uh, that makes it a little bit different even more important if you can get a photo of a client of your client's client a customer or something on here that would be good that's like a real testimonial or a video of your clients doing their thing building these water things all right so your hero row has a lot of opportunity to build on top of this to share the story of this company before even scrolling down this is so important why is the is it important? Is because you have six seconds to impress someone before they leave. So again, and I've said this in previous streams, uh, you have three seconds to load up the site. And if it doesn't load fast enough, people are gone. You have the other three seconds to tell people, where am I? What is it about? Where do I go for more information? And all of that, all three of those questions, it's hard to understand immediately because there's too many colors and there's not a clear story of what's going on. All right. Uh, let, and that's before I even scroll down. See how all of this above the fold is screaming at me. But yet when I scroll down, visually it's cleaner. There's more space and I can understand more because less is happening. So this part is good. But everything above it is just like, ah, okay. And um, so who we are, combining the tradition. See, best, okay, combining the best from tradition, experience, and modern management exclusively from our. So there's something in here. Again, how many other competitors do this exact same thing? What makes them different? Even with this who we are, it's like, okay, that's cool. What customers have said. All right, we need images, photos of humans, not just a logo. Unless this is uh, still a work in progress, re change these profile images to actual images of photo or photos of people. All right, cool, cool. So yeah, if your client was like, I want all of this above the fold. Cool, calm down. Let's clean it up and let's help you get to your goal of making sure people call you or buy your service by telling who you really are. Because right now, this is just like any ad, any TV ad that you see in the weekends where it's like, Buy now, buy now, buy now, buy now. And it's like, ah, stop it. Whereas you look at like Nike ads or Apple ads and they're like, here's a story. Oh, and by the way, at the very end of the ad, this is, this is the product that helped propel this story that you just watched. That's more important than buy now. Okay. Um, and that's just on your homepage. Let me go to one more page and then we'll end the stream. Okay. So this, again, clean, this is nice and clean. We have people. There we go. Why don't we put the, these people on the front page? Like let's, let's yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. 
about us combining okay so you use the same content from the home page what makes them different that's what i always say what makes you different everyone is different tap into that okay but uh keep going content you may have heard this before content is king and it's king no matter what medium it is you listen to a a song the content of it is more powerful than the beats than the the you know the the way the notes are arranged in a song is more important you know um yeah yeah in, in movies the the story has to be good or else you're just making another michael bay film <laughs> um the story of the company is more important than the actual service itself because that'll lead easily into the services that they do and it will show that they are different than the competitors all right there's yeah i'm just beating a dead horse now but like you get it you get it uh lot of stuff sure i see more is about the content of the website the homepage video is in progress but i agree more pro page products where i have a lot of cms items and filter uh i'm guessing it's here cool yeah um yeah there's a a lot i can keep talking about but we're out of time but just keep i would say before even thinking about the design honestly i would step away from the design don't even look at the design all right look at the content first organize that content and then make a wireframe or look at a webflow template that can fit that content and then go with the design the design is the last 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 part it's like if you're making a movie if you're making a film, you're not going to just start rolling the camera and thinking that the, uh, why am I doing this? That's old school. You're not going to just film a movie and think, okay, the content is going to come out from the actors. Okay. Ready and action. No, the actor is going to be like, what's my line? What's my motivation? What do I have to feel? What do I have to convey to the audience? What do I have to convey to my fellow actor who I'm speaking to? No, the pre-planning, the pre-production of it all is 80% of the film. The last 20% is the logistics and production part. Okay, well, 10%. And then the other 10% is post-production with the graphics and effects and the Thanos and whatnot. But yeah, you know what I mean. Content first. Step away from this design. The content will drive you to it. All right? Cool. All right. So again, next week, I will see you for the Halloween party stream. We're going to be just playing video games, uh, playing Among Us, and see where that takes us. Uh, the stream could fail, and that's fine. I mean, this is an experiment. Why, why not? Or the stream could be fun. But sign up if you want to play. It's a maximum, I think, 10 players per game. But we'll have people jump on a zoom call and then i'll stream that zoom call to youtube linkedin and uh, twitter and also stream the game on there but uh yeah it'll be fun and yeah stay tuned for the survey for the live course 20 hours monday through friday oh it's gonna be fun okay i'm done i gotta eat lunch but thank you all so so much let me get the music back in this where is it? Where's my music? There we go. Yeah. Thank you all so much for your support of the streams, watching them, watching recording. If you're watching recording, you got to this point. Thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you so much for your subscriptions, your likes, your tweets, your comments and being a part of the pixelgeek.community website. I appreciate you all. And we're gonna make this community so, so fun. We, we're just in month two of it and we have big ideas and I'm glad you're here for the ride. 
Uh, I will see you next week, Saturday at 10 a.m. for the Among Us Halloween stream. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. And as always, make the web beautiful together. See ya.